Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about calcaneus. So this is the largest and strongest bone of the foot and it is situated below the talus and it also extends beyond the talus. Its axes are directed forward, slightly upward and laterally like this in anatomical position. Okay. Now in front it articulates with cuboid to form calcaneocuboid joint which is saddle with radiosynovial joint and above it articulates with the talus to form subtalar joint now let's see how to determine side of the given calcaneus so it is having six surfaces namely medial lateral anterior posterior dorsal and plantar now you can clearly see the dorsal surface is having multiple articular facets and medially it projects a bony shelf that is sustained aculum talli so this should be medially now this medial surface is concave whereas lateral surface is almost flat and the anterior surface is smallest and it is having concave or convex articular surface so this is right calcaneus i have similarly if you see this and this is sustained aculum talli which should be medially this is the largest articular facet should be dorsally this is concave medial surface and flat lateral surface. Similarly, you can make it confirm by seeing the smallest concave or convex anterior surface. So this is left calcaneum, this is right calcaneum. And they are situated like this. The long axes are forward laterally and slightly upward in anatomical position. See this, like this. So if you see the articulated foot, from medial end, see the orientation of calcinea. See, it is directed laterally forward and upward. See this. This is how it is oriented. Regarding general features, as I told you, that it has having six surfaces dorsal, plantar, medial, lateral, anterior, and posterior. So let's just first see the anterior surface. It is smallest and it is having concave or convex articular facet. Now this will articulate with corresponding concave or convex articular facet of the cuboid and together they form calcaneo cuboid joint which is saddle synovial joint. So here you can see this is the proximal articular facet of the cuboid and together they articulate like this. Okay. So this is saddle synovial joint calcaneo cuboid. Now the same thing when we see in articulated foot, just see over here, this is the calcaneocuboid joint. Now as we have discussed that the calcaneum is having slightly upward tilt. Now this upward tilt is maintained by a bony projection from the cuboid which is situated below. Now this is termed as calcanean angle. Okay. Now this supports the calcaneum from below and that maintains upward inclination like this in anatomical position. Now next is posterior surface. It is subdivided into three parts, upper third, middle third and lower third. The upper third is smooth and it is related to bursa. The middle third is providing attachment to tendo achilles and tendon of plantaris. Whereas the lower third is subcutaneous and it is generally weight bearing. So it touches the surface in standing like this okay see this so here lies the fat and this is subcutaneous part so this is small concave or convex anterior surface and this is the posterior surface now next is the plantar surface or inferior surface now it is easily identified by presence of three tubercles there is a single anterior tubercle and two posterior tubercles medial and lateral now this is concave medial surface so obviously this will be the medial tubercle and again this medial tubercle is large and it is weight bearing whereas lateral tubercle is smaller so when we put the calcaneum like this on the flat surface it is the medial calcaneal tubercle it is touching the surface like this okay and there is a formation of triangular area between these three tubercles. Now this triangular area will provide attachment to long plantar ligament. 
Now there is another groove in front of the small anterior tubercle. Over here you can see. Now this will provide attachment to short plantar ligament. Let me show you the same in articulated foot. So over here you can see this is large medial calcaneal tubercle. This is smaller lateral calcaneal tubercle. This is anterior tubercle. So this is a triangular area providing attachment to long plantar ligament. And in front of the anterior tubercle, you can clearly see the groove. See over here. Now this groove will provide attachment to short plantar ligament. Now next is dorsal surface or superior surface. Again, it is subdivided into posterior third, middle third and anterior third. The posterior third is non-articular. And if you see it from side, over here along the posterior surface, as we have discussed, this middle third provides attachment to tendo Achilles like this. So here lies the bursa and over here, this is the posterior third of dorsal surface. And this is related to fibro fatty tissue which separates bone from this tendon, okay, like this. So this posterior third is non-articular and is related to the fibro fatty tissue. Now next is middle third, it is articular and it is having large oval articular surface. Now this will articulate with corresponding articular facet under the body of the talus you can see over here and these two together will form subtalar joint see this so here is a formation of subtalar joint now same thing you can ap appreciate in articulated foot so over here this is dorsal surface posterior one third non-articular and in middle third you can see formation of subtalar joint see this okay now in front is the anterior third of dorsal surface again it is subdivided into articular and non-articular areas the articular area is having anterior and middle articular facet of talus and that will articulate with corresponding articular facet along the under surface of head of the talus you can see over here over here and here these two articular facets will articulate with corresponding articular facet along the anterior third of dorsal surface of calcaneum okay and along with the navicular bone and spring ligament these together will form yellow calcaneal navicular joint okay so anterior third is having medial articular and lateral non-articular areas now this lateral non-articular area is further subdivided into medial narrow and lateral wide area this medial narrow area is depressed and this is termed as sulcus calcani now if you if we joint the talus like this and if you see it from laterally you can appreciate that depressed area sulcus calcani and that is having a corresponding depressed area underneath the neck of the talus that is sulcus telli so together these two sulci will form a blind track which is termed as sinus tarsi now this will provide attachment to introsious talocalcaneal ligament so here is the sulcus calcani this is sulcus telli and this entire thing is sinus tarsi now lateral wide area over here this will provide attachment to extensor digitorum brevis inferior extensor retinaculum and stem of bifurcate ligament so these three structures are attached to the wider lateral area whereas the medial narrow area will provide attachment to introsious talocalcaneal ligament so this is regarding dorsal surface or superior surface next is lateral surface it is flat it is subcutaneous see over here and in its anterior part it shows a tubercle or projection this is termed as peroneal trochlea or peroneal tubercle now above to that lies tendon of peroneus brevis and below to it lies tendon of peroneus longus and itself it provides attachment to inferior peroneal retinacula so this is lateral surface the same thing you can appreciate in articulated foot see this is lateral surface and over here is the peroneal trochlea now last surface is medial surface it is concave from above downward see this and along its antero superior part it shows a bony shell this is termed as sustentaculum telli it is said just because it supports the talus from below so if we put talus like this the head of the talus is supported from below by superior surface of the sustentaculum talli like this and as we have discussed along its superior surface it bears two articular facets which will articulate with corresponding articular facets along the under surface of the head 
okay and they form part of talocalcanean navicular joint now under surface of this sustained oculum talli shows a groove see this and this groove lodges tendon of flexor hallucis longus now along the medial surface of this sustained oculum talli it provides attachment to four structures namely spring ligament superficial fibers of deltoid ligament a slip of tendon of tibialis posterior and medial talocalcaneal ligament okay now medial to that structures over here lies tendon of flexor digitorum longus so these many structures are related to the sustained oculum talli now the rest of the surface is concave and over here somewhere will be attachment of the flexor retinaculum between tibia and the medial calcaneal tubercle and between the bones and flexor retinaculum there forms tarsal tunnel so almost all the structures entering into the sole will have to pass through this so as it is concave so this is regarding medial surface so these are the features and attachments along the calcaneus hope you understood well thanks for watching